following is a presentation of BFA Sports. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful shore town of Brigantine, New Jersey. We have the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Championship, powered by BFA Sports. And for BFA Sports, I'm Al Fisher, along with my brother from another, Doug Stasek. And, Doug, exciting day down here in Brigantine. Man, I'm excited for the football, not so much as spending the whole day sitting next to you, though. Uh, I, the feeling's very mutual, matter of fact. So, uh, they're probably you'll probably hear some fighting in the background, folks, but... <laughs> It just comes with the program. <laughs> well, this is a big day for a lot of these kids, families, programs, volunteers, coaches alike. The beauty of the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League doesn't happen without all of those great groups coming together. We had a chance to talk to our uh, head referee wearing the white hat today. is none other than the legend, Mr. Leon Daniels, yeah. and he's joined. By, oh, joined by Tom Germana. On the, he's the official scorekeeper. Make sure we get the rest of these folks for you. Sorry about that. As I got blindsided, line judges are Mike Collins and Bob Greco, and the umpire is Ted Cunningham. All right. So it starts right here, Doug, right Beautiful. at this level. Yeah, and it starts all today at beautiful Brigantine, New Jersey. Uh, of course, of Jeopardy fame, because they always say Chicago's the windy city. However, it's now known that the windiest city in the country is, in fact, Brigantine. I, I experienced it on the golf course down here at the Brigantine Golf Links. Uh, that was when I could play golf, and now it's very questionable. I don't know if you really call that golf. I mean, you, you do carry around some equipment, drive the cart, and hopefully the authorities don't follow you home after you play. <laughs> All right, we're ready to play some football as the Northfield Cardinals in their black and red uniforms. Ball fumbled at the snap. Taken there by Carter Graves. Carter Graves wearing number one, perhaps in uh, tribute to another Cardinal, Kyler Murray. Sure. How about that? Wearing number one, you're right. Yeah, so the uh, Northfield Cardinals versus the Upper Township Indians. Quickly second down here as Carter goes back into the, Carter Graves goes back into the huddle. Should be second and 11 as he lost a yard on that last play on the fumbled snap. Twenty-six. Grasso goes in motion and flag on the play. Well, early morning jitters. A false start going to be called against Northfield. It'll back them up five, so it'll bring up second and eleven. Make that second and sixteen. Oh, I can see your math. Uh, yeah, you're. you're uh, listen, I'm a little foggy, you know. I'm a, I'm a Holy Spirit Spartan alum. It didn't go their way last night. I don't want to say that it's throwing off my. Uh, your mojo? My mojo, but yeah, well, maybe I'm a little bit foggy from uh, trying to add up those yards that didn't go the Spartans' way last night. All right, second and 16 for the Cardinals. Grasso goes in motion. Another fumbled snap and recovered oh, 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 oh. by Graves. So we're saying third down is Leon Daniels. And give credit to the Upper Township Indians. So their down linemen are all over the snap. And here's what's happening. They're trying to break up that snap. Instead of getting guys into the A-gap, it's just big contact going on with the center, 
And so uh, Coach wisely going to call a timeout and try to rally the troops. At this age group, sometimes it's easier said than done. Man, true that. You're talking about a level of, of play that – you know, obviously at this young age, you're still trying to learn all the key basics of the game. And there's the coaches right there coaching them up. Yeah. Again, just settle the kids down, right? It's fundamentals, guys. Hey, listen, we need the center quarterback exchange in order for us to get the ball where it needs to go. No big deal. You know, kids are nervous. You can see uh, pumping themselves up there. Got number 24, Dominic Hoffecker. He's listening to the coach. He's ready to go. All right, so we probably have ourselves a third and about 18. Our camera, our camera, Nick Penza. Nick Penza. I, I'd have to check his birth certificate. He's showing some speed on the field. He ran across the field as fast as you usually run to the concession stand when I heard the pork roll sandwiches are two for six bucks this morning out here. He, as soon as he said pork, I ran down to the concession stand. I wasn't even, I didn't even let him get the rest of the words out. Here it is, <laughs> third and 18. Clean handoff, given off to Grasso. Grasso on the left side, tackled. Behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, a little bit of celebration there by number 30 for Upper Township. Brayden Jones. Jones. Nice tackle there defensively. Dropping the hammer. And listen, you coach at this level. I don't know if it was really coaching, but you coach at this level. Fourth down, I guess you got to go for it because there's, really no, there's really, no, really no punting at this You're level. You're not right? going to have any kind of big kickers. Now, at the yeah. peewee level, usually you have the option that you can actually say, hey, we're punting the ball. They move it down the field, right. and then they okay. just give the ball back to gotcha. the other team. Um, how, do you, how do you decipher, like, the yardage-wise? Where you just kind of have it set where you're going to go, yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, they're going for we'll it. Double check that, but they have a big play. Look into the playbook, fourth and uh, 18. Big opportunity for the Knights to get good field position. Graves looking to roll outside with it. He goes to the right side. Nice move as he cuts inside. But he will not get the first down. It'll be turnover on downs. The Indians will take over in great field position. Yeah, so Jax Candelorio, he was uh, just had his sights as you look at the game changer instant replay. And you just see he rolls out, thought he might try to get to the edge, but not going to happen. And that's wrapped up there by, looks like Stevenson. Yeah, number six. Six, that would be yeah, Rylan Stevenson. So nice job there by the Upper Township Indians. So they put pressure on the Cardinals early. Of course, the uh, Northfield faithful, they're out in full force, punching their ticket in Pee Wee, JV, and varsity divisions. And we should mention the Indians coming to this contest 7-1 against the undefeated 8-0 Northfield Cardinals. So big defensive series for the Indians to start this thing off. And handoff on the inside and tackled and gathered. They're still on his feet, actually. Look at him fighting. Angry he roll. Through. He's going to go all the way. There goes number 88. Tobin Robinson. Oh, wow. But there's That's laundry. Down. No way. There's there laundry. Really? Is there dirty laundry on the field? Look, they're pumped up. Somewhere Kyle Brandt of the NFL Network is jumping off of his couch after he sees a run like that by number 88. And Robinson. And blocking oh, the a back. block in the back. Oh, man, that is a uh, big kill. Look at him fighting here. Yeah, he just never stopped those feet moving. You got to keep those high knees, keep them up. He's got an escort. The kid at this level looks and like there's a running the, back. And there's the block in the oh. back. There's the block in yeah, the back. That's a spot foul. But so. Hey, give credit. You know who the block was? It was the quarterback all the way down the field. <laughs> that's a kid who's into the game. All right, so it'll be first, and it should be first and 20, I would think, with the penalty from the spot foul. Yeah, it's going to be a first and a Brigantine Links golf cart trip at this point. We're going to back them up a bit. Is that to the 19th hole? Yeah, uh, I know. The 19th uh, hole is a good I'm place to hang that out. Golf cart. All right, so first and 10, handoff on the inside. That goes to number 26, who's still fighting. And it looks like Nolan Mossy was that 26? 25. 25. Asher Comaforo. Or come for you. Yes. We'll just rename him like Chris we're, Berman we're, would. Yeah, I usually. Oh, another flag on the field. I'll tell you right now, Don Henley's singing dirty laundry right now, this uh, situation, because it's killing up the Township Indians right now. As they had a touchdown on the board, gets pulled back to a block in the back, was right there in the middle of your screen. 
And now another penalty against the Indians. Well, Pushes them back. It's early in this one, right? And again, you know, kids are pumped up, adrenaline's going. You got the Northfield Cardinal parading up and down the sideline. I mean, this is a big yeah, look one. At, I guess so. The very famous Northfield Cardinal, as a matter of fact. A little bit of a bobble on the snap. That goes to number 80. Robinson he gets hammered there. Well, I said that number 24 for the Cardinals was pumped up, and Dominic Hoffecker, when he was in the huddle with Coach, smacking himself around, and now he's smacking around running backs. He's got the mentality, smacks the people around. So Hoffecker with a great tackle there. By the end of the, the day, I'm going to smack you around. Uh, I can't I'm so wait. fired up. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Headbutt without helmets on. I like it. <laughs> Well, your head's so big, it's like a helmet anyway. Yeah, I'm surprised I could fit up here in the press box. Is that the ego part or the actual head part? Is that the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Says first and 10 on your board, but a bad snap. It's going to be recovered there by the quarterback, number six. Number five, rather. I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, I don't change Candelora. quarterbacks every yeah. snap, well, just so like you know. Candeloro has been in there for a while. Right. Oh, he has. Candelora recovers his own, well, it was a bad snap by the center. Nice job by him to recover. Ball now on the 34-yard line of the Cardinals. But it is now third and very long. Hand off, Robinson, he breaks a tackle there. Still fighting, a gaggle of Cardinals. Tackle him down to the ground. It looks like for another loss. Uh, looks like Graves led the uh, flock there, trying to bring him down to the ground. It sure took most of the defense to make that happen. So fourth down. Actually, it is the punt. And punt. They're going to call See, a punt. So here it is. The declare situation. that they're, they're going to punt. punt. They're okay. not going to need to kick it. Leon Daniels. Walking it off. Definitely better at math than I am. So these are young men here, obviously young, we'll call them boys at this level. This is one of those deals where if you're in a higher level, you get all the way down there, you break a tackle for a touchdown, gets called on the flag, you go backwards. Sometimes they can beat you down mentally, but these guys are here and they're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Trying to fill each other out, and again, familiarity, right? You got an undefeated team, a team with one loss. Sure. So, you know, as you would expect in a championship round, top two teams appear to have made it to this final and if they say defense wins championships I guess that might hold true at least early in this one definitely a defensive battle with the exception of that big run by Robinson it was called back now it's first and 10 for the Cardinals on their own look like 17 18 yard line oh handed off on the inside going up the gut number 22 that is Dominic Bucaferino Bucaferni Bucaferni He's going to go all the way for a Cardinals touchdown. What an outstanding run by Ryan Bucaferni. Man, busted right through the gut. This was took just it all the way. Fantastic execution by the Cardinals, right? Good trap hole, goes right between the guard and the tackle, and he just squared up the shoulder pads, and uh, Bucaferni. The Book of Fernies can run, and no surprise there. Uh, so somewhere, I'm, I'm sure you, if you look in the background, you'll see his dad, Ryan, just going all the way down. Running with him? Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> Heck of a run by Book of Fernie. So they're on the board now, six to nothing. They look for the two-point conversion. So they so one point. extra point at this level. Right. If they kick it, they give them extra credit. But in this case, one point will get it done. And there's and a to the big man, number 24, Hoffecker, and he gets in for the conversion. Yeah, Hoffecker on the counter. And that's a big conversion. So just as I said, defense is going to win championships. The Cardinals flex on a bit, and they go all the way down the field in a single play and make this one 7-0. All right, we'll be back for... More football. More football right after this.
two yard run. And welcome back after the touchdown, 82 yard touchdown run by Buca Ferney. The Indians take over first and 10. Hand off as he sweeps outside to number 88. And that again is Robinson who's tackled there by number 24. And there's that young man again, Hoffecker. Yeah. Two guys that are uh, standing out early on in this one. Clearly the Upper Township Indians trust in Robinson a bit. They've given him the ball quite a bit here early in quarter number one. And for Hoffecker, he's just, this kid's been like shot out of a cannon this morning. I mean, you see him in the Northfield huddle. He breaks the huddle. He's pounding his chest, making tackles left and right. I mean, carries the counter in for the extra point. Second and... Looks like it'll be second and 12 from the 18 yard line. Robinson again gets an opportunity, but tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Milstead. And uh, this defensive pressure the Carters are putting on. Jared Milstead, man. Kid has, see the old bobblehead thing going yeah, right there? He's like, man. yeah, boy, I'm ready. Let's go. Fire it up. And again, another loss on the play for about two to three yards. So it'll be third and about. 16. Yeah, expect to see uh, Indians try to attack the edge here. See Isler at the bottom of your screen. His responsibility is going to be contained on the back side. Take away the counter. And they don't. They go to the strong side, but they're not going to get much. Very well disciplined Cardinals defense at this point. Caden Cummings on the wrap up on that. Pick up about three yards on the play. And it's going to convert to a fourth down. Obviously, oh, here the four, Indians yeah. will go for it. Yeah. From a punt standpoint, again, me not understanding the, the, the rules in this situation. I don't know would it be advantageous for the Indians to punt or not. But here they are at their own 39-yard line. So field position-wise, they're eating not a lot too bad. of. Listen, they're, they're eating a lot of clock, and I think that that's the concern, right? Is they know that Northfield has a very potent running attack, and they don't want to try to possibly fall behind two touchdowns. So they're going to try to keep this going. But a good shift there by the Cardinals, the strong side, and the naked boot to the weak side. Oh, good hit there by number 22, I believe. It was number 22. There he is, Buca Ferney. Yeah, Buca Ferney stays home, wasn't surprised at all. They try to go with the counter move to the short side of the field. And uh, unfortunately for Upper Township, looks like their quarterback a bit shaken up and Jax Candeloro is going to uh, hobble over to the field. He might have taken a helmet on the arm right there. That, that smarts. Yeah, we were talking earlier and found out that for Northfield, they had an injury to their starting quarterback, uh, Colin Schur. So Schur is out today. We saw a little bit of a challenge with the exchange early on with Graves, and maybe that could have contributed. Not a lot of familiarity there, um, but give credit to the, the Northfield Cardinals defense now. And uh, it will be Carter Graves that will lead them back into the huddle and see if they can go back to back on scoring here. It's a great field position for the Cardinals at the Indians 40 yard line with 18 seconds less left here in the first quarter. First down Indians, and then uh, Cardinals and then the 40 yard line. Graves, as mentioned, behind center. Hands it off to number 26 and that is Grasso as he punches forward for several yards. Yeah, good job there by Reed Grasso. Grasso for seven. He picks up seven yards on the play. Yeah, Grasso, he uh, yeah. did a nice job, and that'll close out the first quarter, the first quarter. where the Newfield Cardinals early 7-0 to zero lead over the Upper Township Indians. You're watching BFA Sports live coverage of the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Championship.
All right, we move to the second quarter with the Cardinals leading 7-0 after that 72-yard run by Puka Fernie. And as you said earlier, Dad was probably run down the sides. If we had a shot of that, a separate shot, it would probably have been something with this sprint screen. But we're not we're not there yet, are we? Yeah, we'll nah, get there. Not yet. <laughs> All right, we start the second. Second and three for the Cardinals. And a flag on the play. And it looks like the preliminary signal is offsides on the Indians. And we get the official from Leon Daniels. It is offsides. So that'll be an automatic first down for the Cardinals. Good discipline there by the boys in red. Tip of the cap to the offensive lineman. Sometimes at this age when you want to go two on two and try to get the defense to jump off, a lot of times you kind of burn yourself a little bit, but not Northfield. So uh, had a little bit of a jitter early on. Go in, coach settles them down real nice, and then the next thing you know, they are operating like a well-oiled unit right now. This does not look like Pee Wee football, no. by the way. Handoff on the inside of Hoffbecker. Pulls over oh. the tackler, would-be tackler Masters. Yeah, nice job see here on the Game Changer instant replay. Another counter run. Saw this conversion on the uh, point attempt after, and he just squares up. And uh, credit to Masters for holding on to taking him down, yeah. and that's Logan Masters. Yeah, Logan Masters held his ground well, even though Hoffbecker a little bit of a size advantage, pulls into him, but picks up an extra two to three. So Owen Eisler, good look at the center for the Cardinals. He's over top of the football. And a pitch over to 26, and that's Grasso, who's on the outside, breaks a tackle, still on his feet. Oh, the ball's oh, ripped away. away. Candeluro. Candeluro, and he may go back all the way down the sidelines. Someone call the police. He just he's robbed him. He's out running the official. Look at Candeluro. And he's probably going to the big, he's going to the big house after that steal. <laughs> Touchdown <laughs> Upper Township Indians. My oh my. What a turn of events here. Are you kidding me? Wow. This is just heads up, right? Good. Oh, nice job there by the Upper Township. They hold him up, and then the strip. Candelero had that all, all in his mind. He wasn't necessarily worried about the tackle because he knew they had him stopped. And he just strips it right away and goes down the sidelines for the touchdown. Wow, what an exciting contest we have. 7-6. Indians are going to have to flip the switch, get the offense out on the field. And Daniel's and calling a official touchdown. touchdown is good. They must have gotten on the BFA Game Changer Instant Replay. Just to make it official. Yeah, there are no uh, challenges, by the way. Oh, yeah, Sometimes yeah. we get asked that. All right, no yeah, challenges. Yeah, not this level. That is not official. Get yourself in trouble. And now 7-6 to six to score, so the Indians look to convert to tie this game up with 6.57 left yeah. in the second quarter. And again, I'll say it again. This is PB level football? Yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, oh, we're going with a quarterback sneak, but a whistle on the play. Yeah, it's going to be false start. And that'll make it a little bit more of a challenge to try to convert the extra points. So it'll be six yards, seven yards for the conversion. The ball's all spotted on the seven yard line. I don't hear the cowbells. Got the public address announcer calling for more cowbell. Can never have enough of that. <laughs> Nearest Robinson on the outside. He takes it. Nice tackle there. Looks like by Grasso. And he was joined there, I believe, Graves on the play. So the Northfield defense able to hold him out of the end zone on the point after attempt. And a Fantastic start to this championship Sunday for the Cave Atlantic Junior Football League Championships. At seven to six to score, conversion not good by the Indians. And it's funny, the best offense for the Indians is their defense. Hey, but ironically enough, their quarterback is the one that ends up stealing the football. That, that is ironic. And no surprise, he knew exactly where the end zone was and they were not gonna get him. I believe there's a story about you actually doing that, stripping the football, but going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I, I, 
you know, I, I tried to convince myself it would be a touchdown, but my, my dad told me otherwise. It's a, it's a life lesson here, son. Can't, back in the sometimes day, sometimes you got to go backwards to go forwards. Jim Marshall did that for the uh, for the Minnesota Vikings back in the day. I, I, I was 40 at the time. It was back <laughs> in the 70s. There, we're back to offensive football. Graves hands off on the inside. Oh, Hard run right there. Hit. Nice job finishing off the play on defense for the Indians. And that's Buka Fernie again. Yeah, Buka Fernie on the run. That was Asher Comforo who was the one that finished them off. But nonetheless, positive yards for. The Cardinal. Buka Fernie picked up, it looks like three on our school board. I believe he picked up a few more than that. It's a nice run by Buka Fernie on the inside. As quarterback Graves comes into the huddle and calls the play. They'll come up. Second and five. Buka Fernie takes the pitch on the outside, cuts it back in. He's got some runner room still on his feet. Still driving his feet for extra yards. Look at this young man run. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, big time finish by number 22. Buka Fernie it is. Dominic Buka Fernie. And good job sealing on the outside by his lineman. And then check out number 26, wow. Ori Grasso. It's like, hey, let me help you, man. Let me that's, help a brother out. That's teamwork, And he pushes man. him as much as he can forward. And uh, Big the youngster showing off that conditioning. Ball spotted on the Indians 47 yard line. It'll be first yeah, and 10 yeah. again for the Cardinals. Yeah. Inside handoff again to Buka Ferdy. Tackled there after a pickup of about six. Yes, yeah, so that time it was Grasso, but again, a good defensive wrap up there by Asher Comforo. Second and five is now what we're being told. Yeah, it's a little tough because usually what would happen is when we shoot from press boxes, the down markers are on the opposite sideline, right. but they're right. in front of us today, right. and uh, we're not able to actually see the field where we're calling it from right now. Oh, ball, ball comes loose. Ball recovered there by... Yeah, so a good wrap-up on the defensive side, and uh, Matthew Endicott in on the play for the Indians. Good look at the huddle for Northfield. You can see Hoffecker and Grasso, Milstead. Seen Pat, that's Milan Peo, actually. And a good look at the line. And a pitch to... Grasso again as he cuts it back on the inside. He's got some running room. Another great cutback as he's still on his feet and tackled after a pick of about 22 yards. Man, Matt, Logan Master on the touchdown saving tackle, but the Cardinals, they continue to go down the field, and uh, this one unfortunately looks like uh, Grasso might be a little shaken up for the Cardinals. So uh, never want to see that, but it is very cold today. So uh, a bit blustery, so I'm sure that didn't feel too good uh, having two guys land there on the leg. But uh, it's going to give us a chance to take pause here in Brigantine at beautiful Walt Bue Field. Walt Bue Field. There we go. Walt Bue Field. Give it up. There we go. Hey, even the Cardinal mascot, he's fired up about it. Hey, there you go. Walking off the field so a uh, lot to be pumped up for right now if you're a Northfield Cardinal fan, especially if the Northfield Cardinal mascot. These guys are flying all over the place on the field. Literally and fittingly. Yeah, you got to do it. So, uh, again, it's what it's all about here at the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League. Peewees are pumped up. Hoping they're going to get a chance to bring home that title back to Birch Grove Park. I Run inside by number 22, and again, that's Buka Fernie. So uh, Buka Fernie with some peak performance, dare I say, early in this one. Yeah, get fired up. Cardinals flying high as they continue to drive the ball down the field against the Indians. Yeah, looks like it's first and 10 with the clock running with 3.49 left in his first half. 
Bucaferni and Grasso in the backfield. Long one, Hoffecker. And it's kept by Graves. Graves sweeps to the outside, cuts it back inside with a nice move. Picks up about four or five on the play. Good work on the tackle, brought down by Danny Christopher. Yeah, I talked about it being a little bit cold. You can see Graves kind of rubbing those hands together. I know you're not really familiar with uh, what it's like to actually have a football in your hands, getting a chance to, to run with it. But when it's cold like this, and you got helmets and face masks, they're hitting those hands. What are you it, trying to say? I'm not an athlete? Well, you're a well, good, fantasy football, is, is good fantasy football well, player. You're a good fantasy football player. I don't hold a football. Inside hand out to Buka Ferney. Oh. He spins off his last tackler. He's driving to the end zone, and he's in Buka for the Ferney's touchdown. In for the touchdown. That's right. Wow, what a run. Buka Fernie, we're going to get a chance to see this here on the Game Changer Instant Replay. He actually, oh, they're going right to this. Hold on. Wow. No, that was. No, that was. Okay. Okay, well, that was it. Faked us the, out. That's right. All right. Ryan Schumacher. We'll get a chance to uh, take a look Executive at it. Producer. Teasing, actually, on the uh, Instant Replay. But we'll get that for you perhaps after the point after attempt. I thought it was a touchdown. He got in. All right. Well, questionable call there. And, and there it is. Oh, Hoffaker yeah. gets in. Ah, oh, now we got a touchdown. Play the graphic again. It's there it. Play go. it again. So it's Dominic Hoffaker, number 24, with a great carry on the inside run. That was Hoffaker for the run and the touchdown. So he uh, carried in the point after conversion on the last touchdown. And now this time he gets to take it in himself. So will they switch roles? As they try to go for the point after, it looks like we got a. There's confusion all over the place in the booth. So I'm going to say that that was the extra point, and now it's 14 7, maybe? Yeah, it's got to be 14 7. That 14, touchdown 6, was good. What do we got? Puka Ferdy did score on a touchdown, I believe, and that was conversion there right. on the play. So the it's now a 14 6 contest. All right, well. And one of the things I, I I keep watching here, and again, I don't want to overstate or embellish anything, but the execution of both of these teams is pretty pretty darn impressive. You're talking about a very disciplined, very yeah, you know, well, executionally wise, very talented at, again at this level. Yeah, these guys did a great job of putting together a drive. Right, we saw a quick strike approach by Northfield in their first score, where Buka Ferney just busted it all the way down. The, uh, the field, no one was going to catch him. And then you saw the athletic yeah, movement by down. him. He leaped over a player, and then another finishing move. If he ain't broke, don't fix it. Give it back to Hoffecker. 14-6 so. as the Indians take over. Hand off to number 25, and that is Asher Kamifuro. He picks up about three on the play, two or three. Clock running with 2.25 left here in the first half. Let's go. So it's early on Saturday. A lot of cowbell for a lot of blue or so cool. A lot of cowbell. A lot of cowbell. I'm burning for you, I think it is. is yeah. This one? As it drops back and looks to throw. And a nice tackle there. Oh, ball to ground. But recovered by an Indian. Big takedown by Hoffecker and a good heads up play by Fitzpatrick to jump on the football as it popped out of the hands of the quarterback. Man, Hoffecker's the kid that gives you nightmares. You're going to get home and, you know, get all ready to go, get out of the shower. Next thing you know, someone hit you again. <laughs> Just tackled you when you're least expecting it. Look at this young man. He's intense. I love it. Third 10 now. A little Rolling Stones action in the background. Yeah, they're bringing all the, all the cowbells. All the cowbells. <laughs> Third and ten. And oh, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Does it look like he was looking to throw on that last play at third and ten, but tackled there. And it'll be a loss of about two. So the Indian's going to conserve some of this clock with a minute and change remaining. Make that a minute 11. We got a little ahead of ourselves. Um, but there is one 11 left on the clock here in half number one. And it's a big play as it's going to be fourth down. Uh, not only do you want the first down, have an opportunity to potentially score, 
But more importantly, you've seen a quick strike attack that could be in place courtesy of the Cardinals. And you really don't want to go into a half being down two touchdowns. Now, one touchdown and a conversion, actually, no two point conversion, you're technically down. You're almost down two scores, technically, because you can only get one point conversion. So in that case, it actually is a two, two score game right now as the Indians look to keep the Cardinals at bay, keep caged, if you will. Yeah, uh, it, just a little bit of a different strategy. If you're the Cardinals, you're trying to take away the outside and you want to make sure that your backside help is staying home on the reverse. Because when you have these young guys, you get all pumped up, you follow the football, but to have that discipline and make sure that someone's staying back, especially at fourth and 11. A uh, couple things are at bay here. They, the Indians know they've been having a challenge trying to stop a kid like Hoffbecker who's just been blitzing and blitzing and blitzing. So you kind of try to take advantage of that. Hopefully he's over aggressive, but the over aggression works usually on a counter play. Cardinals coach looked like he was actually repeating the same thing you were saying because he was so you could tell he was talking about staying staying in your staying home if you will. So it's fourth and eleven now for the Indians. The most two spoken words of youth football defensive coaches. Stay home, stay home, stay home. Off sides on the defense. That helps out a little bit for the Indians. Very slick. Go for two, you know, go on two. Now fourth and six. Now a much more manageable fourth down distance. And the ball held right there by Capoferro, and he goes, tackles out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Will not be enough for a first down. So good job there by the Northfield defense. Candelero tried to keep it. It'll be a turnover on downs. Clock stops with 104 left. Again, the ball spotted on the 39 or 40 yard line of the Indians, and the Cardinals could strike quickly. This here is where you kind of back up, play a little bit wider. You want to utilize that sideline as your friend. So you need to kind of flush everything back inside to make sure that you have deep help. Uh, two guys that are going to be really important from the upper township defensive front is going to be the safety and whoever's playing back on the defensive back standpoint, right? Because they're kind of your out. This is what you call an Alamo defense, meaning no matter what, nobody, you know, deeper than the deepest man, it's not against the pass, but it's really to make sure you contain and make a guy like Buka. Oh, Graves looking about to run. throw. He keeps it, cuts back inside, still on his feet, tackled hard there. Yeah, excellent job by upper township being able to contain Carter Graves and looks like number six. Yeah, Ryland was, Stevenson. Yeah, Stevenson might have got a cleat right to the belly, but nonetheless, tough kid hangs in there. Timeout called quickly by the Northfield Cardinals as they reorganize himself. So, uh, good look at the Cardinal coaching staff. It kind of looked like Graves looked like he wanted to throw on that play because he rolled out as if he wanted to throw. And uh, side by side look, both of the uh, huddles. So the messaging is very simple. If you're Upper Township, you got to keep contained. Don't give up the sideline. And if you're Northfield, do what you continue to do. Be physical, dominate up the middle of the field, and make sure you're getting to that second level of blocking. So you're going to clear the first three to four yards. But once it happens, you need to go find the next guy, right? Like find the next guy upfield because that second level of blocking is going to be the one that could potentially launch him for another touchdown. All right, we'll see what happens here with 44 seconds. Clock will start on the snap. So Owen Eisler right now, big responsibility as the center to get off a clean snap. And he does get one off, and Bukaferni takes one to the outside. He sweeps it. He's got some running room. Look at the speed. Still on his feet as he gets out of bounds around the 22-yard line. So again, Northfield attacking the outside, but Upper using the boundaries to the advantage and not before Buka Fernie with another big run. But again, you got to appreciate when you have a kid like Reed Grasso, another back who's out there lead blocking. Right? There's no such thing as really a fullback in most of these fronts anymore. But to have somebody that's going to be an escort keep you out of harm's way, that's really big. And you're going to see the wing back in, looks like they're gonna go with Hoffbecker, so 
counter. Off again to Bucaferni on the inside handoff. He stole his fees. He drags a couple of Indian tackles. Tacklers, I should say. Heads up and job. Time call quickly. Heads up job by Logan Masters. Was able to wrap up. And you've probably heard the public address announcer tell us that the Cardinals are out of timeout. So now you can almost predict they're not going to run anything in the middle of the field. Got to, again, widen up those gaps if you're upper township. Try to flush them back inside. Uh, and the good news is in a first down situation, the clock will stop until they set the ball. Right, if they don't get a first down, here's my question to you. Are, at this level, since you have coached at this level, are they calling two plays at, right now at this level or is it not something they can, they can kind of grasp? Because I'm asking, am I asking too much? No, 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 it, it's not that they can't grasp. What's gonna happen is they're just gonna run the same play twice. I got you. They're gonna tell them, hey, we get tackled, just line up and run the same thing again because they don't have a timeout. Right, uh, all right. And possibly they tell a kid like Carter Graves, just keep the football and run. Right, right. So it should be interesting. Ball spotted, looks like on the 22 yard line of the Indians. 34 seconds left here in the first half. 14 to six, Cardinals lead over the Indians. Big opportunity here for Upper Township defense. And a pitch to Grasso as he breaks oh, it off, drops the ground. And Hoffecker luckily right there on the play to recover the fumble. Nice play by number 88, Tobin Robinson. Gets his hand in there and just rips out the football. And he spikes the ball. So, clock stop now. It'll be, I believe, fourth down now. That was, uh, yep, fourth down confirmed by the side judge. John. And basically what I had said, that's what's going to happen. Coach is going to say, if the play goes good, run the same play. If it doesn't, they tell the quarterback what to do. And exactly, you know, kudos to Graves. Gets up there, hammers it into the ground. Yeah, good heads up football. All right, so it's fourth down. It says second and eight on our scoreboard, but it's actually fourth down and about 10. But we're really thinking fourth and the end zone right now are the Cardinals. Yeah, going to be hard to get one more playoff, even if they get a first down. Yeah, so motion um, and a dead ball. They kind of tipped their hand, so I'm going to the counter again. But... A little bit of movement too early. It's going to back them up five. That'll excite the upper township faithful. It's going to be a little bit harder for the Cardinals to try to strike pay dirt with possibly their last play of the half. Now, once again, it's now fourth and 15, or fourth and goal, if you will. 15 seconds left remaining in this first half. For all intents and purposes, if the Cardinals do not get a playoff. It's going to be an automatic dead ball, and it'll convert. It'll be a. There'll be a chance for Upper Township to run a play. Run play. And Graves looking to throw, actually. And he keeps the ball. He's running. He's got some room on the outside. He makes some nice moves, nice cutback. And tackled right there with about five seconds left by number five. And again, that's Candelaro. Here it is again on the game changer instant replay. And they're going backwards. Look at them. They're dancing. Uh, oh, that's, that's fancy. How about that? All right. So uh, our little cold even for our instant replay unit as uh, that one back back out of it. Well, this turnover and downs. Four seconds left. Indians now have the football. Now, is this one of those situations where you just kind of drop the knee, or do you still try to run a play because you're so deep in your own territory? Uh, at this level, you run a play. Because at four seconds, as long as you got good ball security, take the chance that you can get one of your speedsters open. And that's my get point. Down the field. Ball security. So we'll see what happens. Indians come to the line. Lamar takes a snap. He rolls. He's going to keep it himself. Looking for running room and tackled right there by Let's number 21. And that's Caden Cummings. So that'll do it for the first half. 14 to 6, your score, favor the Cardinals. We'll be back with the second half here on BFA.
cheerleaders. That was an awesome display, everybody. Next up, here comes our middle upper, upper captain. We got the thumb. We got the thumbs up. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Give it up for our cheerleaders. Good job, both sides. Good job to Northfield and Joe, we can see you, Joe. There we go. Paul, make sure Joey's wrapping that sandwich right, Paul. 
if you're here today at the you know it's halftime so what better way to go into the brigantine rams concession stand got some cheeseburgers grilling up but it, I, I it, can't believe al fisher came back to well the those booth. those looks like about a little over half a dozen cheeseburgers they're all mine actually they're making me uh two triple burgers yeah oh yeah they don't have enough burgers to contain you pal yeah well but uh yeah come food. on over the uh, concession stand is open again Proceeds benefiting the Brigantine Rams football organization. As the cheerleaders Ooh, have uh, finished up their performances, and we're headed into uh, the second half coming up soon. Three minutes and 20 some seconds, so we still got a couple of minutes ready to go here at beautiful Brigantine, New Jersey. So we'll be back here on BFA. Oh, look Chilly. at Wow. Ooh, baby. I got my eyes all over that. Is that enough for me, actually? I don't know. Uh, there's not There's not much that would be enough for you, all right. I don't really think. <laughs> As we're back live, 14 to 6, your score here in the second half. Uh, Upper Township with the football. Handoff inside and breaking free and running still hard is, I believe that was Robinson with the football. Oh, good takedown there by number one. The quarterback, who's playing defense, of course, Carter Graves. Actually, that was uh, Camafaro with the football. And I believe that was a first down run for him. 
First and 10 for the Indians. A little bit movement in the front, not called by the referee. Handoff again on the inside. Breaking free is number 28. Backs like number 88. Tobin Robinson with the football. The clock continues to run. Indians now padding it up the middle. Seven minutes and rolling here in the second half. Actually third quarter. So Upper Township needs to answer back with two scores to get back in this contest. And handoff again inside. Nice job by the Cardinals to catch it right at the line of scrimmage. Well, this is where Upper Township needs to go to work. Got to answer the bell, right? So you're down one. Came up with a big defensive stop to end the first half. So now going into half number two. Try to tie things up. Now fumbled snap, handed off again over to number 25, and that is Kamaferos tackled there on the sideline. Another good take down by Graves and Name on there on the play as well. Kamaforo, uh, I think he got a cleat right in the belly. Time out in the field by. That never feels official. too good. Oh, it's got to be rough. So an official timeout on the field. It'll be a quick one. And uh, we're here live upstairs in the press box of the Brigantine Rams. BFA Sports, Doug Stasic, Al Fisher for this big one. And it is a big one indeed. You talk about, we talked about execution on both sides of the football for both teams, and they've really shown that right here in the first half going into the second half. Indians coming out, running the ball well. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a great display of football, one that uh, a good football fan out there in the great state of Northfield, Marcus Mann, he enjoys this kind of football. Oh, yeah? yeah. Marcus Mann does? Yeah. All right. Former uh, Washington Redskins uh, linebacker. <laughs> At least in his dreams. At least in his dreams. <laughs> There's a pitch right there to Robinson. He tackled. What a great tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Big takedown there by Cummings. Caden Cummings just lights it up on the game changer instant replay. Great blitz. Sheds the blocker. And then he throws him to the ground at the 40. Just an incredible open field tackle by Cummings. But again, Robinson's not easy to take down. And great execution there. Again, at this level. Very impressive. The clock continues to run with 5.23 left in the third quarter. And it looks like we're moving the football. Was there a penalty on the play? Mm, we're moving ahead to the scoreboard. You can see it says uh, fourth down up there. Okay. Uh, oh, it was probably they chose the punt. It's probably they what chose the, the punt, so yeah, they walk it off, the and yep. we... Uh, there we go. Northfield going to work. Was able to deduce that. You know what we're... You probably don't understand what deduce means. That's fine. Yeah, anyway, um, it's first and ten at the forty-yard line for the Cardinals. Go ahead. What was your going to be smart remark? What were you gonna no, be? I, I was. Uh, I ordered the hooked on phonics one time, and <laughs> I asked for a refund, and they're like, "No, no, not not for you. Our guarantee is good for everybody but you." Like, oh, okay, I understand. All right, first and ten for the Cardinals. Inside handoff again. Yeah, it looks like. Yep, Bucaferni there picks up about three yards on the play. Second half here, what's going to be real curious to see is the physicality of football that the Northfield Cardinals are playing. Does that kind of tax onto this Upper Township Indian squad? Uh, they're just doing a lot of things between the tackles. They're running a lot of gaps on the counter. But for the most part, they're doing a lot of their damage tackle to tackle, not on the edge. And the, the three-headed monsters you see in the backfield is the other piece of the, uh, the equation here. As a nice inside hand off to, I believe that's Grasso. And it was number 26, Grasso, with a good run there for about 4-5. or five. And Matthew Endicott wrapped him up and was able to take him down for Upper Township. But when you keep getting these big first down runs, it makes it a little bit more palatable. There's a word for you. Or manageable. Yeah, to uh, keep converting. You know, we saw this on Monday Night Football at the Eagles. It was infuriating to see, you know, Indeed. Washington kind of continue to get so many yards on first down. And when you go to... Third down. Oh, the oh, ball, ball on the ground. Out. It looks like it's recovered by the Indians, and it is at the 50 yard line. Big turnover. Number 21, Blaze Zintner, able to come up with the football. You just see it here. They hold him up, and he gets that nice club in there. So he recovers the ball, but give credit to number 30 with the strip. And you see Braden Jones punch that ball out, and that is a big way. 
to answer the bell in this mini heavyweight bout. And he gave it to the right player with Hoffecker, who runs very hard to get that extra yardage. Unfortunately, gets the ball stripped from him, and now a turnover. He looked for extra yards, and sometimes you try to get that extra yard, even though you had the first down. It's that mentality where, like, I'm going to keep fighting. Opportunities create themselves. Possession back to the Indians. All right, first and 10 at the 50-yard line. You got to think they're going to try to put it in the hands of Tobin Robinson. Ken Laro looks to keeps it himself. Face gets away with a face mask there. No flag on the play. Ken Laro with a nice run down the sideline. And he picks up about 15 on the play. And so after he flag. gets tackled to the ground, late laundry, and that could only mean a probably late hit, which will add another 15 yards as uh, the Upper Township faithful. They're pretty excited here. So you see him go fake, bootlegs to the left. Good, good pursuit by Eisler, but he ends up getting by him, and then Buka Fernie cleans him up. Buka Fernie knocks him out, now he's out of bounds, and then you see uh, the late hustle. Nothing wrong and, with hustle, yeah, but... Might, it, was, it didn't look like it was an intentional late hit. It was one of those kind of deals where you keep churning and you want to make sure the player is down. And unfortunately, just a couple yards out of bounds, gets called with the personal foul. So this could be a momentum changer for Upper Township. Split backs in the backfield. This time it goes to come 4 Oh. Tackle made there by number 23, and that's Shane Foley. Oh, Foley, little struggle to get up there. Yeah. Well, you know, you got all these extra layers on today, man. You got Under Armour, top that, to bottom. Well, my, my problem is I have extra layers, but it's not closed, unfortunately. The, yeah. the, uh, oh. the appetite. Well, yeah, listen, the, uh, I, I, was, I know it was a little embarrassing when the uh, – Somebody called the Brigantine Mammal Stranding Center and said, could you please come to the uh, press box? <laughs> oh, looks like they were a little razzle dazzle. Robinson gets caught behind the line of scrimmage. And Book of Fernie not can only run the football, but man, can he tackle. Yeah, he closes quick. You got two really good athletes that are out there on the field. Book of Fernie for the Northfield Cardinals. And then, of course, Tobin Robinson. Uh, Tobin Robinson is getting his number called time and again, try to help out this Upper Township Indian squad. And, of course, his mom, Becca, quite the uh, athlete back in the day at oh, Absagami. Yeah, yeah right. so uh, Becca Brown Robinson now. That's so, uh, her son. So, again, a lot of great uh, lineage here. There it certainly South is. Jersey. All right, so third and about 12 clock running with 25 left here in the third quarter. Indians threatening, hand off to Camafero. Wrapped up by Cummings and Buka Fernie. So it'll be fourth down. Obviously the Indians will be going for it. Great field position here. Uh, fourth down, also now known as the uh, cowbell down. They get louder at fourth down. Blue Easter Colt would be uh, really happy to hear all this cowbell going on here. Ken Leno and Hundle calling the play. There it is. Big, it says third and 12, but I believe it is fourth down. Ken Laro hands off to Robinson. Robinson showing the speed, but a great pursuit, great discipline by number nine, and that is Owen Eisler on the tackle. Eisler with the great wrap up there. And a the player uh, shaken up on the tackle, but you'll see it here on the replay. Robinson tries to tuck the ball back inside, and, you know, Eisler, then you see Buka Fernie get kind of bent up there, but not sure who the player is down on the field. And it is, uh, it is Buka Fernie. So you saw there at the tail end of it that he kind of got bent forward. He was a little bit stuck there. And, uh, yeah, he's like uh, Gumby. <laughs> Just bounces right back up. He's a little green slab of clay. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> something, the, uh, something the Buka Fernie family prides himself on, flexibility. So believe me, it's not the first time he's actually probably stretched into that position. All right, so it's and, uh, first and 10, so the turnover on downs. 
on this last play. Yep, and the uh, Upper Township faithful. I don't know if they were cheering about the uh, two for six pork, pork roll and cheese sandwiches. They seem to be pretty uh, fired up about that. Well, they had a deal on it two for five ninety nine, but unfortunately they didn't have any change, so they had to roll it up to two for six. Nice. Yeah. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first and ten for the Cardinals. 128 left in the third quarter. Handoff on the inside of Grasso. Spins off, continues to churn away, and picks up about five on the play. Candeluro on in, in on another tackle. Actually picks up nine on the play. About second and one. Clock continuing to melt just over a minute here in quarter number three. There's no melting here today. It's a little chilly out here. Popsicle City. And second and one. Pitch to Bucaferni. Sweeps on the outside. He's got some running room. Flag on the play. And we'll see if it's coming back and what the call might be. And it looks like the preliminary call is holding. Well, here it is on the Game Changer Instant Replay. He tries to get to the corner, and as he does, a uh, little bit of jersey stuck on the gloves of uh, Grasso there. I like the aggression. It's funny. It, you you kind of look at that and you go, well, he's actually not in the play. If you just kind of gave him a little chuck. Again, it's easy for us to call from the booth, but it's like even when we're watching the Eagles or whoever we're watching, it's like, what, what was he doing holding there? You yeah, know what I mean? But it's a natural, the, it's yeah, a natural listen, reaction. At this age, though, yeah, we've seen sure. Grasso lead in blocking time yeah. and time again. Doing That's a great job. It's impressive. You yeah. don't know how many times at this age yep. you send a kid out on the edge yep. and they don't hit anybody. Yep. As a coach, you'll take that all day long. All right, so it should be second and 11. Pitch to Grasso. Grasso running with some purpose. Sweeps it on the outside. Still some running room as he goes to the sidelines. And it looks like he may have picked up a first down for the Cardinals. Right. Takes it just past the 40. Masters is able to wrap him up. Or is that Candelora again? Yeah, that's Candelora. Um, but, hey, why not reward the kid, right? He just got called for that holding penalty, but you appreciate the fact that he's being a big-time teammate. Helping clear the road for Buka Fernie, and now you give him the ball back. I will say, another very difficult thing to teach at this age group is you see some of these guys carrying the football with the football in the arm inside the field. You don't really want to do that. You always try to switch arms and get it to the outside in case someone tomahawks it. Better chance for it to bounce out of play. First down run by the Cardinals. It looks like it might have been Grasso again. Is that 26? No, Grasso was on the outside, so. And it's Bucaferni yet again. Bucaferni. So Dominic Bucaferni. Picks up about four on the play, second and six. As that'll end the third quarter with your score, 14 to six, favor of the Cardinals over the Indians. We'll be back here on BFA. Fourteen to six as we enter the final quarter. Eight minutes remaining in this contest. The Cardinals in a very advantageous position, basically up two scores. And we were talking about it during the break, Doug. And we said, yeah, "Tell us what you were saying." Well, some coaches at this age group, it's very difficult to even find somebody that can kick the ball over the upright. But a lot of coaches will practice it in kind of a hail mary environment, where normally you're like, "Ah, oh, we got to score hail mary, some kind of long ball." And the Cardinals go for two, and they get them the jump. And the, so you do that with kicking. You might not actually kick it in a game, but a lot of times you'll try to figure out, like, hey, if our backs are against the wall and we can't do anything else, we need someone to attempt the kick, can we do it? 
Because remember, it's not just trying to kick it and get the ball up, but you got to have a snapper snap the ball True. seven yards deep. Of... Somebody catch it, put it on the tee, and to have all three things go yeah. right before you even maybe get a chance to lift it off. I mean, the percentages are very low, which is why we're indicating that this really kind of is a two-score contest right now. All right, so second, actually first and four. There's a nice run there by Grasso. Tackled there by Robinson. And tackled there by Kamaforo. And it looks like it's going to be first and 10 for the Cardinals. Oh. Is there a penalty? There may be a flag on a play, and there is. Face mask was the call. Okay. So if the Cardinals are going backwards, it must have been a hands to the face face mask, as opposed to the old grasping the face mask. And referee seems like he just wants to keep walking. He's yeah. Walking right, right to the concession stand, which I'm, <laughs> I'm going to follow him right there. <laughs> Yeah. They saw you coming off the concession stand. They closed the window. They were like, oh, we're done. They not only closed the window, they started boarding it up. Record sales today <laughs> with uh, Al Fisher in attendance. Chapter 13. <laughs> 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 All right, so 7.52.51 as the clock continues to run. So it's got to be, I would think, first and 25 on that 15-yard penalty. And the pitch goes to Bucaferni as he sweeps on the outside. Another flag down as you saw on the screen. Bucaferni with a great run, but this one's coming back probably as he speeds away. He's tackled down there by number 33, and that was Matthew Endicott. But this one's probably coming back. It looks like it might be blocking the back. That's a tough one here. For the cause, and it looks like it's right there in the front of your screen. It might have been incidental contact, actually, but they did call the flag. So it looked like the, the offensive lineman was falling and then fell into the back of the legs of the Upper Township Indian, but it's coming back nonetheless. And it's going to be second in a long way, second and 30 for the Indians. Not the way you envisioned it for the Cardinals, even though they were up two scores, as they look to eat some clock here. So, you know, we keep talking about Matt Endicott. And a handoff on the inside. Grasso, unfortunately, falls on his own feet. And at this level, if you're down on the ground, it's down by contact. He'll come down to third and about 27. But Grasso had some open field to run. Unfortunately, tripped over his own feet. Clock continues to run with 6.50 left in this contest. And you're watching the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Championship here on BFA Sports, the Pee Wee level. This has that not been Pee Wee level football. Again, Grasso takes the pitch. He's got some running room. Cuts back. He's still on his feet. Cuts back again. And that's a big run by Grasso. So you're doing this, you're seeing the change of game plan here where in the first half they were pounding a lot of things between the tackles and now they're opening up a little bit, attacking the edges and then working back towards the middle of the field. Uh, but a good job by the upper township defense. Try to take away the sideline and funnel them back to the middle. Get your help is what they call that. Get your help and that's what they have done. But the clock, Al, is just running quick. Melting away on these chilly temperatures. Again, that was about an 18 yard run by Grasso. It's still gonna be fourth and about nine, I believe. Actually showing third down on the scoreboard. Third down. All right, third down. Another inside hand off the Grasso. He pounds his way. Oh, what a big hit. And a nice finish by Kamaforo. And again, it looks like they're coming off the field. Even though the scoreboard said third, I believe that was fourth down. Yeah, again, we're we're sitting in a spot that we're uh, screened from the field, but uh, it does look like it's a turnover on Turn downs. Down. So it was fourth down. So 
So Turner went down, so the Indians take over in pretty good field position. And they'll take over first and 10, I believe at the Cardinals 45 yard line. Yep, first and 10 at the 45 yard line, 528 left. And Camafaro, sorry, Candelero keeps it himself, but a nice tackle there made by Grasso, and he is all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> He's like the visa car, man. He's everywhere you want to be. This guy is flying. So the Cardinals trying to slam the door on this late rally by Upper Township. Remember, Upper Township scored on a strip and score in a big way. So I should say strip and sprint as Candelora, the quarterback, Candelora was quarterback on defense. Yeah. So you know that he can bust it. And right now, if you're the Northfield Cardinal coaching staff, they're telling them, keep an eye on 88, keep an eye on five, and don't let them up the sideline. Again, defensively, the execution by the Cardinals so far in this contest with only 444 left in this game, they have been very strong. The only score again given up by the strips by Condolaro. And the touchdown, that's a run by number 25, Camafaro. And he picks up a couple on the play. It should be third in a, in a long, I believe 17. I think I heard third and nine, actually. Third and 19? Third, third and 19. 19. That's what I thought. It was a big, big play there defensively. So third and 19. Clock still melting away. The Indians come to the li line of scrimmage. And a quick snap as Robinson takes the handoff. Cuts back to the middle of the field, but tackled immediately by Grasso and Buka Fernie. And it's now fourth down. And a long 19 again. Well, with three and a half minutes remaining in the game, we're kind of approaching this level knowing that you're going to need almost two scores. It's do or die time for the Indians. Again, I'm sure they know that. And it's a situation where the Cardinals, again, repeating myself, repeating myself, repeating myself, have executed both sides of the football, offensively and defensively. Hmm. That's why they're coming in 8-0. They're going for the pass. He's open. <laughs> and it's incomplete. Turnover on downs, and the Cardinals will take over with 2.58 left in this contest. Pass intended for Braden Jones. Just falls short. Thought they had him open for just a minute, but uh, you're not going to see a lot of pass attempts at the peewee level. And so now, Upper Township has to keep an eye on the clock going to utilize their timeouts. They have all three left, so we can assume they're going to burn through those pretty quickly here. And if you're Northfield, first down could very well put this one out of reach. Agreed. And the one thing you're going to be looking at from the Indian standpoint is trying to strip the football, trying to strip the football, trying to get a turnover, trying to get back in this game, maybe return one for a touchdown, and then see if you can get a turnover on downs with some timeouts left in your back pocket. But it's up to the Cardinals to execute offensively here to chew the clock away and finish this one off. First and 10 on the 48-yard line of the Indians. Hand off on the inside. Nice run there by Buka Ferney. And that'll keep the clock running as he picks up about seven on the play. They're going to try to hold on. Oh, there's a potential another whistle. Probably a timeout, I think. No, nope. clock's still running, 2.42. Uh, 240, clock is still going. So they're going to try to, the what they're going to try to do is prevent them from getting a first down here, then call the timeout, because if they get a first down, you still want to hold on to those timeouts. So good move by Upper Township. There's Grasso, doesn't pick up anything on the play, so it'll be third and three. And I believe that sounded like a timeout whistle. And it is a timeout by the Indians. I guess we'll go to a quick break and come back here on BFA.
All right, again, 2.15 left here in the contest. Third and three for the Cardinals. More than likely, you're looking at an inside run to try to continue to chew this clock up. Timeouts remaining for Upper Township are two. As Northfield still has all three of theirs. And a pitch out to Buca Fern, who takes it to the inside. And that's going to be a first down for the Cardinals. The clock should stop after the first down. And they're saying he may be they might be short. Timeout, Upper Township. Upper Township timeout. calls timeout. They're second with one remaining. We'll see if we can get a two oh eight remains here. As the chains are moving, Northfield so yep. has the football. Looks like they're moving the chains. Yep. So it is a first and ten. So uh, again, good looking to huddle there, the Cardinals. They, even with a two score advantage, continue to coach it up. Well, that's all coach is preaching now. He's yep. preaching ball security, and he's preaching stay in bounds and get up the field. So you're not going to see a lot of trying to run around here and go up the sideline. Like everything here is going to be tackle to tackle, three yards in a cloud of dust, straightforward football. And you most likely are going to see Buca Ferney and Grasso with two arms on the football and with the leaning over their belly just a little bit here. You got to wonder in this situation, you give it to Hoffecker too, as he's a little bit bigger, bigger kid. He runs very well. Yes, he got stripped trying to get extra yardage, but he is a beast to try to tackle on the inside. Uh, they got a three-headed monster back there for Northfield. And if you're part of the Northfield Cardinal community, looking at this Pee Wee squad, you got to be pretty excited about uh, what the next couple of years are going to look like, tiring on a tradition, knowing that you already have the JV and varsity in the championship this year. Graves keeps it, cuts back to the inside. There's the two hands on the ball. Yep, to your point, two hands on the football. Second and about eight as time out called by Upper Township. This should be their final timeout. And it is confirmed by our public address announcer. It's a great, uh, great atmosphere with some of the great DJing going on during the timeouts. We've got a little Bon Jovi going on in the background. Great music, great food. This might have been your theme song back in the day when you were in high school. Living on a prayer? No, you give love a bad name. Oh, love bad name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Al, ironically, I met my wife in Brigantine. I, this I, is I true. do know that. This is very true. It's a uh, good, good play by you. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, back in my Holy Spirit Spartan days, down there at the... Uh, Kessler household is actually where you're on the wall of fame there. Yeah, there's a picture of you <laughs> handing out water bottles yeah. <laughs> and a towel. You handing out towels and water bottles. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> second and seven. All right. Hand off to Bucaferni, who drives forward for about three or four on the play, and, a, and Upper Township will not be able to stop the clock. One forty-five and ticking as it'll be second and seven. And for all intents and purposes, this one is over. As it looked to probably either drop a knee or run one more play. Go look at the head official, Mr. Referee, Leon Daniels. Carl's coach is pretty excited. And now the Cardinals are going to call a timeout. So they're going to set up. Uh, well, two things are either happening here. I, it might not be strategy as much as making sure that everybody has their assignment and knowing exactly what we got to do right here, right? So coach is saying, make sure we get a clean snap because if you're upper township, you're just hitting the center. Like, Eisler is just going to be getting, he's the target. Right now, 
It's not the quarterback. It's not Buka Fernie. It's not Grasso. It's the center Isler. So they're going to do everything they can to get him, you know, a little bit nervous, try to mess up that, that snap. It is kind of a Hail Mary play at this point, but, you know, good coaches are going to tell them, hey, guys, just get that snap up. Do what we got to do. And no shocker here, Hoffecker's got his hand up saying, give me the ball. All right, Eisler should be blowing on his hands, keeping his hands warm right about now because you want that, that good exchange, if you will. Hey, listen, man, it, it was a tough assignment knowing that they were going to their second quarterback right there, but the fact that you know Graves and Eisler were able to get it together after that first series, that's been the big difference maker. And a pitch to Grasso as he takes it and spins, wraps the ball up with both hands. Good, good discipline and good execution right there, but just under a minute to play. As the Cardinals got another Brigantine Rams legend in the house, Johnny McManus. He comes up here in the press box. He's looking for pictures of himself on the wall. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Clock continues to burn with 45 seconds left in this game. Northfield showing why they came into this contest 8-0 defensively and offensively execute to the highest level. Now they're going to protect the quarterback with three behind him, and he's going to probably drop a knee, and he does. And that's going to do it as the Northfield Cardinals are the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Pee Wee champions. A well-deserved honor and a well-executed game plan as uh, the Cardinals in a nail-biter, really. I mean, all the scoring happens in the first half. Defensive showcase for both squads in the second half but uh the peewees from northfield will uh, raise the cape atlantic junior football league trophy and take it back to birch grove park seeing if uh they're looks like they're now hustling back to the middle of the field it looks like they might do they have a uh, banner is that what he's that what he's carrying there or is it a blank and we're looking for uh <laughs> they're gonna line it up at the 50 they're gonna shake hands and we haven't been told if there's some sort of presentation, but I would assume. We're, we're good at playing it by ear, usually. We're going to take a look to see if there's any kind of a trophy or award that's going to be presented out there. But listen, good quality football nonetheless, even though it was a two-score win by the Cardinals. Now, Upper Township Indians playing good defensive football. Candelaro with the strip with the only score for the Indians. And again, Northfield. Comes out the champion. And good sign of sportsmanship there as the teams uh, exchange high fives and then handshakes. And a lot of respect. I mean, you're, you're looking at two teams, they undefeated, other team with one loss, Upper Township. Upper Township coming in with the one loss. They were 7-1, and one. Northfield 8-0. And, oh. and two well-coached, well-disciplined football teams. What a great game. Somewhere the – and there that. is – Look at that. The president the, the, of the Cape Atlantic Junior Football League with the trophy. That's that the Sammy Caraballo. Yep, Sammy Caraballo. And he's going to present he's, Northfield. They already etched the Northfield Cardinals into the, into the trophy. <laughs> look at that. Us. Smack it on there. There you go. <laughs> Man, it, this guy doesn't miss a beat. Uh, good stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll follow the cameras as he probably hands this to the coach. Kids are getting a workout. They're doing a snow they're, angel. They're running more sprints. I'm telling you. Break out the apple cider. Somewhere the Miami Dolphins of 72 are not happy right now. They're not. They're not. Larry Zonka is probably right now. He had a glass of, <laughs> glass of whiskey when the Eagles <laughs> lost. Saluting the commanders for beating the Eagles, but some upset Dolphins right now. But the 2022 Pee Wee Northfield Cardinals, your Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Pee Wee Division champions, and looks like we're going to have a presentation of the trophy. And 
don't forget, folks, on a separate live stream, I believe, correct? Separate live stream? I don't know. When you're you're yeah. laughing over here, but. No, I'm, have... I'm laughing because I, I just dawned on me about our friend, the Northfield Cardinal. He's the man. The Northfield Cardinal mascot. He is the man. And now uh, some remarks from uh, Sammy as they present the award and the trophy as we are the champions, famously of Queen, plays in the background. There's the uh, second place trophy handed over to the Upper Township Indians. Again, fantastic uh, football year for them, make it all the way here to the final and, and a touchdown contest. This was a well-fought, well-played game and Northfield. Showing some gratitude and kind words over to the Upper Township squad for a well-played contest. And, uh, again, you mentioned it as this game went on. Not something you'd expect at the Pee Wee level, but this was a very well-done football game. And going to recognize young Dominic Bucaferni. His coach hands on the trophy. Standout performance by him. And just want to remind everyone to stay tuned because we do have the JV championship coming up next. The 6-2 Hamilton Knights visit the 8-0 Northfield Cardinals. And again, we mentioned that Northfield Cardinals squad. They're going to be represented at every level today. As the varsity squad will take on the Galloway Renegades. But more importantly, the second game coming up today on PFA. The Hamilton Knights 6-2 take on the Northfield Cardinals at 8-0. All right, but for now, that will do it. Final score, Northfield Cardinals, a 14-6 victory over the Upper Township Indians to clinch the 2022 Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Championship right here on BFA Sports. Stay tuned. Coming up next, it's the Junior Varsity. That was a great, great.